Oh, NEA. Eventually you get pushed to a point where it becomes uncomfortable to stay silent, to keep swallowing acts of oppression and injury. Then you're compelled to act, to stand up when other people tell you to sit down. Just Mercy author Brian Stevenson explains what happens when folks have had enough, when they realize that people don't move when you show them the light. They move when they feel the heat. Good evening, RA delegates. I am humbled, I am honored, and I am ready. So too are you. We are ready to turn the heat up and lead this movement. Please indulge me for a few moments while I express my deep gratitude to my home state, Pennsylvania, PSEA. Mary, my campaign manager, Rich, my president, thank you, thank you for your encouragement and support. To my NEA family, thank you. My executive committee colleagues, my new V, Princess Moss, yay! My president and my sister, Lily, for your fierce and courageous leadership and welcome, Noel. I can't wait to stand beside you leading this incredible organization. Thank you to my parents who challenged and nurtured me, my extended family who lifted me up, my children and their loving spouses, all my grandchildren who remind me why, and my husband, Nate who still watches over me. He still pushes and pulls me, catches and loves me. And to you, my fellow co-conspirators in this fight for racial and social and education justice, thank you for inspiring me with your determination and your dedication. Thank you for always making this black girl from North Philly who just wanted to teach the children. Be so incredibly proud to lead a union that stands for the rights, authority, and excellence of education professionals, a union that fights for the right of every student to have what they need to live into their brilliance, a union that embraces the magnitude of its responsibilities that's captured in the preamble of our mission. We, the members of the National Education Association of the United States of America, are the voice of education professionals. Our work is fundamental to this nation. And we accept, we accept the profound trust that has been placed in us. NEA, that profound trust has been truly tested over these last five months. I've seen you working so hard to continue our students learning despite the digital divide we already knew existed. Standing in the gaps that are winding, widening because of the inequities that have been built into interconnected social systems adversely compounded to impact the learning of far too many of our students. And here we are, being bullied from the highest office in the land to reopen school buildings and campuses when we now have evidence they're unsafe. In frustration and anguish, the superintendent in Hayden Winkleman Unified School District in Arizona told the truth. I'd love to be open, but there's no way it can be safe. If you think anything else, it's a fantasy. Kids will get sick or worse, family members will die, teachers will die, one of mine already has. I keep waiting for someone higher up to take this decision out of my hands and come to their senses. I'm waiting for real leadership, but maybe it's not gonna happen. Maybe it's me. NEA, it's us. 
We must be those leaders. We're done waiting for Donald Trump to come to his senses and stop this reckless rush to reopen our school buildings. We're done with waiting for Betsy DeVos to have a clue or care about our students. We're done with waiting with, for Mitch McConnell to do his job and we're done being forced to make that false choice between living and learning, blame for the failures of this administration to bridge the gaps in equity and fairness, we're done. I checked in with a board member and follow colleague who teaches kindergarten in Indiana. They went back to the school buildings last week. I asked her if she felt safe, if her district had put in the place the recommended safety guidelines. This is what she told me. I don't think we should be in school. We already have 40 students in one high school that had to be isolated. I have 24 students in my kindergarten class. How can I social distance six feet? We were promised face shields, but we don't have face shields yet. Our governor is listening to Trump and Pence, so we're not getting the help we need. My doctor friends tell me not to go back to teach. They say it's not safe. I told her what she and her colleagues and students were being forced to go through was unacceptable. And the full power of the NEA, we are working hard to change what's happening. I also told her I was holding her in my heart and keeping her in my prayers. But we can't stop there. We're wasting precious time talking about whether our schools are safe. We already know they're not safe if they're in communities where the transmission rates are not low and declining for the, at least the last two weeks. They're not safe if you don't have space to physically distance. They're not safe if you can't provide masks and other protective equipment. If your school isn't able to sanitize regularly, do daily health screenings and testing, or have plans for when a student or educator tests positive for COVID-19, they're not safe. What we already know, we already know that they're not safe. So let's stop wasting time. Our students need us to focus our energy on co-creating and sharing new teaching and learning strategies. They need us to come together to get resources, do the planning and ask, assess our learnings and adapt our practices. They need us to ensure that every child has access to the educators and tools they need to learn. Every child has the support of professionals to address their mental and physical health. NEA, we must spend our time ensuring our students have what they need when they need it. Those of you who have done the work to build community schools, to harness that power of shared responsibility, to access the assets of your community, to surround your students and families with the support they need. We need you to lead the way to our future. For those of you who know the power of collective action, who launched the Red for Ed movement across this country. We need you to use your collective power to demand this country live up to its promise. And for those of you who know that every single decision that's made for our students and our schools is a political one, we need you to get everyone who knows you, who likes you, who loves you, or intends to keep living with you, to vote for Joe Biden so we can end this national nightmare and build back better. I know throughout this crisis, you have suffered personally and professionally. You're grieving the loss of family and friends. You're feeling the weight of not being with your students and not just guiding their academic pursuits, but attending to their social emotional needs so they can learn, so they can thrive. The suffering is real. The uncertainty, a constant. But this I know, and yet, we are ready. We are ready 
to demand the rights, respect, and authority we deserve as professionals. We are ready to lead our professionals toward excellence through the pandemic and into the future. We are ready to fight for racial and social justice for our students and our communities and this country. We are ready to stand in our power and lead in this moment. I've spent these last five months Zooming with thousands of you, so I know you're nervous about keeping everyone safe and that you're anxious about how to center your advocacy and equity. But know this, NEA will support your demands that you get what you need to safely do the jobs you love. And I commit to you the resources to use your teacher voice and fight. I commit to you the support to expand your ESP influence and ingenuity, be it grassroots action or collective bargaining or legal challenges or political action. That's why my first order of business as president-elect is to work with Lily and Princess to direct financial resources to support any affiliate who looks at their reopening plan and doesn't feel safe asking their members to go back into their school buildings. And we won't stop there. We will commit to you the resources to teach and nurture our children. And we're not doing it alone. We're forging partnerships with the civil rights organizations like the NAACP and the National Urban League and the National Organization for Latino elected and appointed officials. Healthcare professional organizations like the American Academy of Pediatricians and institutions of higher education like Yale's Center for Emotional Intelligence, who is helping us support the well being of our ESP during the COVID 19 crisis. And we will work together to get needed resources for families and create solutions for the growing inequities. Today, NEA launched a partnership with our local PBS station to provide parents with resources and supports in special education and in reading and English language learners. Tomorrow, we will launch nea.org slash safe and just. It will be a clearinghouse of resources you can access to connect with each other to improve your practice in a digital learning environment. It will keep you informed with data from experts and it will provide you with ideas and resources to take action. Because while some of your districts are committed to working with you to ensure health and safety for all and the quality of education for our students. Others are following the Trump playbook, callously disregarding the expert guidance of healthcare professionals and educators. So we've created a school board resolution to unite your communities around a commitment to protect and to support their students and educators. You also find guidance on how to form those critical community partnerships and to develop those collaborative practices so you can build this movement. Remember, one in every 100 Americans is an NEA member. NEA, we have the power. We can do this. As I read John Lewis's love letter that was published by the New York Times after he passed, I was struck by his compassion and his clarity, his resilience and his resolve. This civil rights icon who put his black body on the line day after day because he believed it was his responsibility to stand against injustice. This man who had been beaten within an inch of his life told us that we filled him with hope about the next chapter of the great American story when we used our power to make a difference in this society. 
Through his powerful and compelling words, he urged us to answer the highest calling of our hearts, to stand up for what we truly believe. When Congressman Lewis was asked why he and his fellow civil rights activists stood up, he said, we had to do it. The spirit of history tracked us down and said, this is your time. If you don't get into good trouble, who will? Well, NEA, we will. My fellow NEA leaders, it is our time. I need you to join me in reclaiming public education as a common good, as the foundation of this democracy, and transform it into a racial and socially just and equitable system that prepares every student, everyone, to succeed in this diverse and interdependent world. NEA, this is our time. We will get into good trouble fighting the inequitable systems that allow some of our students to have every opportunity while others are told we can't afford it for them. We must get into good trouble to stop the march toward income inequality and unfettered power that allows that system to continue to stand. NEA, we will get get into good trouble to bring an end to the sexist and homophobic and racist structures and practices that allow those in power to belittle and to diminish and to destroy. NEA, we will get into good trouble every day in every state, in every community all across this nation to keep our students and educators safe and to center our schools in equity and excellence because we cannot rest until all of our students know that we will demand that this country live up to that small but powerful first word of our Constitution. We, it's we, the people. That means all of us, women and men, gay, straight, transgender, non-binary, black, white, brown, indigenous, ABI, differently able, it means we, all of us, have the moral right to pursue happiness, to be fully human, and we know that the moral arc of the universe doesn't bend on its own. We have to bend it toward justice. So we will lift up our voices and we will not falter. We will lift up each other and we will not give in. We will lift up our students and we will not give up because our babies, our babies are depending on us to be worthy of them. NEA, we are ready. Onward.